Welcome to Hickory Street Podcast. I am Michael Zamora, um, and we are here with Inti Uman. Woman. Woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he is a local Denton artist. Uh, thanks for coming, man. I mean, we've been friends for, I don't know, I guess like a, a year and a half now or something yeah, like that. Right like very, too. very, um, l- like, uh, very close to whenever mm-hmm. the pandemic happened. Yeah. Because I think my connection with you was um, the first time I went to a uh, fan in house show where um sub sahara played it was like the first time i had seen sub sahara play at fan and i saw them one other time after that Mm -hmm. but i want to say that was like summer of 2019 okay hell yeah right it was so yeah yeah i remember sub sahara playing at the fan and holding cell at like the with the colored lights and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that was a fun show. It's always a great time to see those boys play. Yeah. But, no, thank you for having me on the podcast, man. I'm hyped. It's, yes. It's a lot of fun. I'm excited. <laughs> um, so, let's go into <laughs> when you um, became, uh, started getting into art and mm-hmm. how you kind of got connected to the local music scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I started doing, like, I guess graphic like poster art, graphic design stuff. Right out of high school, just first started doing posters for my friend Justin Peel's band, uh, Bliss, and they play shows at like at Spinster, and uh, what was it? No, yeah, just just house show posters. Moving up to Denton, twenty seventeen, friends friends and I knew that were in bands would just be playing shows, and I would see like you know Facebook banner flyers, and I don't know the po- those felt flyers wouldn't do the the band's justice, you know, I don't know, just kind of like, ah. Hmm. So did you yeah. kind of seek out the, the musicians, just like, the, yeah. that, you, that you liked, that you enjoyed? Yeah. So you sought them out and asked them if you could make a poster for them? Yeah, most those. definitely, like, uh, mainly, like, if I knew some if I knew some cats that were playing a show and I knew them, like, and I dug their music, I'd just do a poster, just, just for fun, just for free, just for exposure, you know? Because hmm. I, I just love making posters, and hmm. it's just fun. And so, yeah, at first it was just house show posters for friends and friends' bands. I remember, like, with Acid Carousel, they would uh, have, like, a house show or, like, some show somewhere, like, J&J's or something like that. And I'd just make a poster and just send it to them just just, just for fun. And they'd, they'd dig it and use it. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, what were you doing before posters, like, art-wise? Before posters, art-wise, I'd say a lot of, like doodles uh paintings like acrylic watercolor uh some collage work not a whole lot but what was it you know just a lot of stuff like charcoal but discovering digital charcoal's art. cool like charcoal's I, i've, fun, se- I've yeah. seen some really cool stuff with charcoal i think what appeals me about looking at charcoal art mm-hmm. is the depth you can make with really, the shading yeah. like yeah. you can make something look very like 3d yeah dude you know? hyper realistic as fuck man yeah. <laughs> and people are so there's so many people that are talented at that shit and it's like i just have fun with it here and there hmm. but I just oh so you depth. still do it every now and then yeah, yeah. i cool. still like, i love messing around with any medium like oil paint acrylic paint watercolor uh black ink pencil graphite charcoal all that stuff Mm -hmm. just have fun with that nice but yeah always been making art since i was like little my godmother was an artist and she did like some illustrations for kids books so whenever i'd go to her place she had this whole art studio desk area and like we would work on like arts and crafts together and paintings and marker doodles i think i remember you telling me that yeah one time whenever we were driving back from the Denton skate park or something mm-hmm. you're telling me about how she used to do art for um children's books so that's cool so your your mom's an artist too then uh, so. my mom's an artist as well but my it was my godmother that uh had the whole art like drawing desk and studio oh okay yeah that, cool. uh, yeah, that, that <laughs> was up in new york my mother is artistic as well she does like jewelry and everything she makes jewelry yeah that's like, awesome. earrings necklaces 
she knows how to like knit and sew. My, she learned that from my grandmother. My grandmother like knits a lot, crochets as well. Hmm. So, that, that's cool. Does she yeah. like set up shop and sell some of her stuff, yeah. or does she just kind of do it for no. people? Like, just for people. Just, just for, like for like, friends, family. Yeah. yeah, cool. <laughs> she hasn't she hasn't messed with it in a while, but I, I keep telling her you should get back into it. Like, <laughs> get make make like an Etsy or something. Just make some cool earrings and necklaces. Or yeah, rings. There's so there's so much stuff out there online now um like i can't remember what it's called but uh there's like and maybe it's not the only one but um there's like an indie fashion online store mm -hmm. like, like depop or something like I, I don't know it's just like independent fashion designers interesting that yeah. make their own clothes mm -hmm. and um have a profile on this website and yeah. sell like individual pieces yeah and uh so it's not mass produced so okay so it's yeah. like just made by people who sell it through this website mm -hmm. to um other people that's and cool it is Fuck really yeah. cool no middle no middleman or nothing yeah it's directly artist to consumer exactly that's sweet and it's really changed the game in ways that like i would never have thought about that you yeah. know what i mean like i would never have thought about how easy it would be for someone who designed clothes to find a platform to market mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah no, um, to reach out to a market, so that's that's cool. So, anyways, uh, I was so you mentioned earlier that um, you moved to Denton in 2017. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I moved to Denton summer 2017 with my friend Justin, and yeah, just been up here ever since. Uh, moved around different houses, you know, but that's a good time, man. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, Justin, you said Justin Peel, right? Yeah, Justin Peel. I know him. I know him. He was. Is he in Bad Dad Jokes? Uh, he was. He was in the original was? lineup. Yeah. That's oh, that's where I know him from then. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Yeah, he's uh, the homie. <laughs> Shout out JP. <laughs> um, so, uh, when you moved to Denton, yeah. um, we were talking earlier, and you mentioned you were in school for... Mm -hmm. A little while. Did you go to school here at UNT, or were you just like uh, community no. college? Or? I did community college first okay. in call. I did Collin College in Frisco for like a year, and then transferred to NCTC in Corinth. But yeah, then after that, after Corinth in like 2018, I dropped out. Just not worth the money, and it just wasn't what I wanted to do. I'd find myself yeah. like taking notes at a lecture, but then also working on a poster for a show. So I'd be like having to take notes or whatever in a lecture, but I would disregard that and be working in the back row like on a poster design on my laptop. Right. And yeah. I guess I think through doing college that helped me discover it's like, no, I really want to focus on design, and making posters and album art and just doing that really. So <laughs> yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah. I, I think it's, uh, I don't think it's necessary, mm -hmm. really, to go to college, especially if you're, you know, an artist mm -hmm. and you find and you find a way to start making some money yeah. doing it. You know, um, now granted, like the art industry is like very competitive, but oh, yeah. um, you found a way to kind of uh, like establish. Uh, very, I don't know, you, you found a way to establish a, a very a directed way mm -hmm. of um, creating art for the musician and the music, you know, in a way that represents them, which is cool. Mm -hmm. oh, like, you. I was kind of, I was kind of uh, nervous whenever we commissioned you for the the um, our album release show or oh, whatever yeah, yeah. um because i was like you know i've only seen his acid carousel stuff i mm -hmm. don't know what it, what else he could do yeah. <laughs> you know but it ended up coming like yeah, people yeah. people consistently tell me that that's yeah. the best um uh 
like best poster art oh, no way. that we've ever been on. And I was like, cool. Yeah. I ended up giving a few of them away at the yeah. show. Cause nice. people were asking like yeah. some of the band members and the other bands wanted some. So, Hell yeah. um, yeah, that was, I mean, it, it was really like refreshing kind of meeting you in the scene and then throughout COVID us hanging out yeah. and getting closer and, uh, you know, just like going over to Dylan's and mm-hmm. playing music or yeah, just hanging those out. Yeah, were fun, man. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun, man. And uh, uh, right now, I'm you know kind of busy doing this, but this is like mm-hmm. a this is a way that I f- I can feel productive and like yeah. have my friends on. You know, <laughs> no, yeah, I feel this is um, sick, man. Like I love the setup, dude. This mm-hmm. is a good time, man. Yeah. So, um, what what kind of because uh, I, I remember you kind of showed me some of the other art things Mm -hmm. that you you were uh, kind of working on one time Mm -hmm. when we were hanging out. Yeah. Um, Do you have anything you're working on currently? Uh, I'm working on a lot of like uh, commissions have been back, so I haven't really made any private pieces. Uh, I do try to like make a collage every day, like when I wake up, just get some cutouts and just have it like laying around on my uh, drawing desk and mess around with a couple pieces mm. come like go do some chores or whatever come back to it yeah uh, that was something that i thought was really cool whenever we were hanging out in your room mm-hmm. and you showed me some of the collages you made oh yeah yeah uh, uh, the binder. I, you don't see many people do that mm-hmm. I, at least i don't you know yeah. i don't see many people make collages mm-hmm. anymore even on even people that are artists like this is uh, not something I see a lot of, but you do it really well. Like there's, oh, thank you. like uh, there's, <laughs> there's, you, I'm just having fun. There's like a theme, like mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Like it's not just random pictures. It's yeah. like there's a there's a theme, and I can't remember which one it was, but you had like messages kind of pieced together along with pictures that were like fit the message yeah. <laughs> that you were like putting on this collage uh-huh. it was it was really cool but so you so so you still do like collages mm-hmm. kind of whenever you're not doing anything else oh, yeah. right definitely I, I, I have to be creative like my like worst situation or hell is to be just not creative like and that could be like you know drawing doodling painting collaging doing like typography and uh I don't even like music, like guitar is a hobby and like it's something just a creative outlet. Whenever I get stumped on a project or just don't feel like doing like any like media, like, I guess, like hands-on media art, it's just like guitar is fun to mess around with and even skateboarding, just getting out and just getting a few slappies on the curb next to our house, mm-hmm. just anything creative, just like, I don't know, if I'm not doing something creative, I'm on like, I get, I get depressed, it's like, oh man, what am I doing? That's, but, yeah, that's really how it is, man. Like. And that's something I don't think the average person who isn't creative mm-hmm. can understand. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. No um, problem. Like, I don't. I, I've I've tried to have conversations with my friends, and they're like, "Why are you so busy all the time? Like, why yeah. do you always have to have something you're like working on? Like, mm-hmm. why, why can't you just like chill and play video games? Yeah. And, like, just to hang out." And it's just like, I don't know, man. I just, yeah. I gotta be doing something. Yeah, it's no, just how it is. I got a friend of mine um, that I hang out with like, like once a year. And every time we hang out, I'm like, dude, let's go do something. Yeah. And he was like, we are doing something. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, but it's not the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. So, uh, oh, cool, man. So, uh, wh- who have you been making posters for recently? Uh, recently for the made a couple for the Far Out Lounge in Austin, and uh, working with the Carousel again. Just did a poster for them. They have a show coming up uh, May fourteenth at Three Links in Deep Ellum, mm. and uh, yeah, it just it's been good. Uh, those are like mainly just work with the Carousel with, for for shows. Mm. Uh, the Far Out Lounge. Yeah, you're pretty um, close with with those guys. How did you get in touch with mm-hmm. them, and like how long ago was that? Um, oh man, I want to say also like 2017 when I moved up to Denton, when they were still playing house shows, I would just do a poster for them for fun because I liked their music. And I, my first time I saw them was in 2016, I think in September, and that's like when they were first starting. 
and it was fun. Like I just so I love their set. They played with like Pearl Earl and I think I think this band called Heaters as well. And I don't know, just dug the music and Okay. I know a heater I've heard yeah. of that. <laughs> you see like heater shit drawn and spray spray painted all over Denton all the oh, time. Oh really? okay. Yeah, there's a I think there's a, I think it's Carol and Hickory. Uh-huh. Like at the corner yeah. on one of the uh um stoplight posts. Like someone Interesting. Someone like drew with a Sharpie. Like, That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, so yeah, <laughs> but no, yeah, just 2016 first saw them, and then 2017 moving up, just I would just do a poster for them, and then just email it or text it to Gus, and uh, they would just post it or whatever, and then just kept doing it for them, and eventually like we got in touch, and then what was it? They started paying me for posters, and I think I remember I moved in. My, Justin and I moved into our neighborhood over on the south side of Denton, over by Mr. Frosty's, and they, they that's when they were still living at the Candy Mansion in that neighborhood, so we were like neighbors in the uh, street over and shit. Oh, so we, okay. I would just go over, and we'd go to a show together, I'd drop off, bring get posters printed, drop them off at the house, and stuff, and then after that... In I didn't 20, realize you lived over that way. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. no, we used to live on over by Mr. Frosty's, hmm. and so it, it was a good time over there. And then after that house, I moved in with them in, I want to say, the summer 2019 at the house I'm currently at right now. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, like, we moved in together. And so that house was just constantly, like, they were still, like, this was before COVID, so they had shows lined up, so I'd always be working on a poster for them in my room. They'd be, like, doing writing, jamming, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, no, yeah, it's a big family, you know, it's like, what was it? It was, we called it Cosmos Factory, the house. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> after, like, the CCR album. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, so, uh, so it was a... Your, the house you live in was a venue? It was no, like no, a, no, no, no. It was... Uh, the house I'm at right now, it's... Uh, what was it? It was just a... Uh, just a big house. It was okay. just... Like, there was the whole band. It was, like, Gus, Lucas, John... Uh, Connor Mizell and I and Connor does all the like he did uh, he does like all the liquid light shows for them Oh, yeah, okay. So it was like the whole, it was like a whole like family unit We were all just like always just a bunch of creatives working on stuff. Just That's a family. Cool. <laughs> you know, I've seen um, I've s uh, the, the look you mentioned the uh, liquid light show mm -hmm. That's okay um, there was a band that I used to play with in Dallas pretty frequently um, uh, called Ha Fu. Ha Fu. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And I played I played with them at uh, this venue in Dallas that's no longer there and we played like one of the last shows oh, before sure. it got closed down like yeah. oh like maybe even t like two weeks later or something. Damn. Um, but we, we played there yeah. and they had one, they had someone doing that, like with a projector or whatever. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, they, they had someone doing one of those things. I was like, that, that's pretty fucking cool. Like, yeah. I had dude. no, I, I didn't think like to even do something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was, it kind of fit their music because their music is like very, it's like half slam poetry, yeah, but not like it's. Okay, it's that got, sounds it's interesting. got some like singing stuff. Yeah, and, like sometimes we'll sing in Spanish and. Oh, that's it. Uh, yeah, it, it's really cool. Yeah, uh, it was just a two piece. It was just him and a drummer. So nice. they used to just like vibe on stage and yeah. just improv. And <laughs> he he had some like very interesting like dialogue in between yeah. songs too you know it's just mm -hmm. it's just one of those people that just is naturally a performance artist you know That's what cool. i mean those are always fun um, to see live yeah it's been a long time since i talked to that guy yeah. um uh i hung out with his i hung out with him once at trade winds like two years ago and that was like the last what? time i saw him i just gotcha yeah, it was just like an open mic. He was running over there, but um, anyway. So that was the first time I saw that. But uh, yeah, those things, those things are cool, right? Watching the people mess with. Yeah, you know, they're like, they're really neat. Connor and I we were talking about like the other day. There's like different formats for the light shows. There's like digital, and there's like hybrid light shows, and there's like analog light shows. Hmm. And like he knows way more about it than I do, and like you know I just love talking with other creatives about like their mediums and stuff and 
hmm. Connor, he's a good he's a good artist with the visuals. The, like he does like works with like the liquid oils and colors and paints. But then he also uses like digital mediums like VHS tapes and like different like loops and effects effects and like, shit. Like uses it like a filter. Yeah. Kind of okay. It's cool. like it's gnarly cool. shit. <laughs> like, but yeah, I know the carousel right now in Austin. They've they've been uh, working with the Astral Violet Light Show, and you know uh, mm-hmm. Sydney. She's she's good, also great artist, like great visual artist. Like her projections are sick, mm-hmm. and it, yeah, it fits their music for sure. Oh yeah. So, uh, dig it. So, did you sort of become friends with Gus? first or did you kind of uh, become friends with everybody in the band at the same time while I'd you were say, making posters for him or? yeah it was uh started i first hung out with john and uh yeah first started hanging out with like john and then gus and then like what was it uh ian uh was then lucas later when lucas uh, joined the band and Lucas was the one that invited me to move in with them when I was like moving out of my old place. Mm. And so, mm. no, it's just we, Lucas and Gus and I, we all skate. So we like go hit up our DIY, the DIY here in Denton, uh, Deerside. Shout out Deerside DIY. Mm. And, uh, but no, yeah, just go there, build, skate. And no, yeah, just, just homies hanging, just all dig the, have similar interests and shit, but we're like very, we're all different, come from different backgrounds and shit, but. It's a family, man. <laughs> yeah, good times, good homies. Speaking of background, um, how old are you, and when did you start getting into making art in general, and like, what kind yeah. of art would you? Uh, would I'm you 23. Do first? Uh, when I first started like making art, I've been making art ever since I was like in daycare, I want to say. But just like finger painting and <laughs> shit. Yeah. But <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. I guess I made art in daycare too. Daycare. You know? <laughs> Dude, oh, yeah. one, one, back in New York, what was it? I remember in elementary school, there was like this whole like collage thing. It's like you did collage like a fruit bowl and like it got picked to get put in like the little like elementary school like gallery display in like in the city of White Plains. Mm-hmm. And I also made this painting of like a a green tiger with purple stripes. I remember other kids <laughs> were just giving me shit. They were like, the tiger is orange or black. I was like, no, I, this one's green with purple stripes, man. <laughs> and it got put in this little gallery. <laughs> it was just funny shit. You know, but, that um, needs to go into an acid carousel music video. <laughs> That's what I mean. An animated yeah. uh, purple tiger yeah. <laughs> or green tiger with purple stripes hell yeah that'd be sick I wish I still had those pieces I think my mom might have them saved somewhere in like a, a bin or like a portfolio or something but I don't know hmm. but no yeah I always always loved making art when I was a kid and then in high school I took like an art class and that was always like a fun fun escape and from like the day of like just stress with schoolwork and shit it was like go there paint uh, I don't even know a collage draw and it was always fun, so mm. art's always just been fun. Just you know, dive into it, just have fun with it, man. I don't mm-hmm. know, and yeah, but definitely since like 2016, 2017, been more consistent of like painting, drawing, collaging, just all that stuff. Just having fun with different mediums, mm. and yeah, I don't know. Just I don't like to make art, uh, you know. For not necessarily for someone else, but like I always, anything I make, I just make for myself. And but like whenever I work with clients, if they have a certain vision and idea, I'll work like we work with we work together. It's a, like a team because like sometimes I'll get like full creative uh, reign, you know, and it's always fun. But sometimes I get uh, what was it? Sometimes I work directly with uh, musicians or the client, like on what they want in the what's their vision for the project, whether it be album art, a logo. A poster, stickers, T-shirt, but mm-hmm. yeah, and like mm-hmm. I love, I love it all. Like, but definitely having like free range of all creative aspects, it's really fun because like you cool. just go anywhere with it, and like you know the client trusts trust me to do with whatever I feel right, like will go, what I'll go right, I guess, or feel right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Just feel it out. Yeah, and, and figure out. You know, mm-hmm. just see what happens. So yeah, just having having fun. Really, just you mm-hmm. know, it's. Like all the. Would you consider it like the the phrasing? Because I know people use this phrasing um, whenever it comes to music a lot, yeah. uh, as it being 
like art being an escape for you do you would you say that it's like that for you is it an escape or is it more so just like uh something that you uh or do you just enjoy doing like mm -hmm. uh, how would you like describe your relationship with art my okay. relationship with art it it kind of it's kind of both it can be an escape but then also just an expression of how i'm feeling i don't know it's like it's it can be a love-hate relationship kind of like with skating too you just love it but then also just hate it sometimes mm -hmm. it can like you get the the best high off of it, but then it also gets like it can send you down so sad. It's just like fuck. Yeah. You get in like a little rut, but it's all it's all fun. You know, it's it's fun about it. It just comes in different waves, you know. But yeah, like whenever it's fun to put like sometimes pure emotions into a piece, into like a private piece. Just just get it out. You know, it's, and then you feel good. You know, like it's a good way to channel emotions and feelings. I feel like just a creative, positive. Uh, you know, release of, of stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And then also just, yeah, I don't know, just having fun, you know? Not overthinking it, not, you know, not worrying about how this thing, I don't know, just keeping it simple. There's this quote that my, my good friend John David Bartlett, uh, he always says, like, keep it simple, keep it love. And, like, hmm. you know, just, that's, that's, those are the, some words of wisdom that just try to, like, live by, man. I don't know. It's just... That's with cool. anything really anything in life being anything creative I don't know yeah you know uh, just in the time that I've known you you seem to be a fairly spiritual person like just mm -hmm. uh, in the conversations I've had with you um, when when would you say that sort of uh, became like one of the focal points in your personality like what, mm -hmm. what what when was there something that happened to you was there or was this like just uh something that you kind of got um like adopted because of the community that you were in or what uh, i could say i don't know like i just always try to live and just be me i don't try to live for anyone else i live just you know i love everyone and just i don't know just want to i just want to be me just this is who i am like dig it or don't dig it man and <laughs> i don't know it's just spirituality i grew up in new york going to a lot of powwows and like a lot of you know a lot of indigenous culture and you know there's what was it the whole aspect of like you know the great spirit and like the just different spirits and our ancestors are with us and you know they're here to guide us here and give us wisdom and I don't know it's like the blood of the ancestors flowed through our my veins your veins your ancestors you know hmm. and I don't know it's uh I was growing up with the powwows and the whole indigenous culture with the elders there's always been a sense of spirituality you know father son sister moon uh, especially I don't know it was I didn't necessarily know too much because at the time just being a young child and like that's just like what the community I grew up with and then Later on, just like growing up in the, you know, Christianity in the church, just like, oh, uh, I don't know, it was just weird. Like, I didn't, I didn't dig, you know, you know, Christianity or organized religion necessarily. Just, it just wasn't my bag. I never liked going to church when I was a young kid. And like, yeah. we got into, like, when I grew up Catholic and then family converted to Christianity. And just, I don't know, just both just weren't, weren't I didn't ever dug waking up early and having to go to church and shit. But, uh, well, so you were, you were kind of raised in a Christian upbringing then? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. First I grew up like pretty like, uh, I guess you could say like, it's like pagan or whatever. I don't know. Uh, just very, I guess like, yeah, I don't know. Just like growing up as a kid and like, I don't know, I had, had to go to church cause that's what the adults said and the family said, the parents said they got to go or whatever. Mm. And, uh, so yeah, I don't know. Grew up Catholic. Because my grandmother's Catholic, and what was it? and then my mom converted to Christianity, and uh, so but I never really dug it. And then moving to Texas from New York, it was like the whole Southern Baptist scene, and that shit's that shit's a whole other world, man. <laughs> I'll yeah, tell you what. yeah. You know, you were um, you were talking about that, and I was thinking to myself, like growing up, um, my parents, uh, my mom more so than my dad, really. Yeah. But um, my mom made it a point to uh, like raise me and my brother mm -hmm. in a church community. Yeah, um, we weren't 
so heavily involved in the church that we yeah. went on like every trip that they mm-hmm. offer but we went on a few trips yeah. you know um and it, it was i guess it was like an okay way to have friends outside mm-hmm. of school yeah at that young of an age you know what i mean yeah, I feel. but um i was kind of raised baptist up until it was like i don't know sixth grade yeah. Sixth or seventh grade. Mm-hmm. And then um, we switched to a Methodist church. Yeah. And then it was like that same year, I remember telling my mom that I just like wasn't getting my questions answered. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I was one of those, I was one of those kids that like wanted to talk to the pastor. Yeah. And, and had questions about things. Yeah. And it was like the, the, pastor like the the youth pastor like the main pastor or whatever would just like continually i don't know dilute my questions yeah and I, I recognized it even from that young of an age and mm-hmm. so i want to say i was like 11 or 12 yeah. or something like that whenever i just decided i wasn't gonna go anymore yeah. and my, my mom like tried to guilt trip me and mm-hmm. my brother into going and i'm just like i'm not going yeah they don't they don't know yeah. <laughs> they don't know the answers to my questions For sure. yeah. so um i was kind of a stubborn kid from that standpoint mm-hmm. and i kind of understood why like as a parent you would you would do that like Mm -hmm. raise your kid in a church environment so i don't knock parents for doing it yeah because i really do think that um that like upbringing probably saved me from Mm -hmm. some pretty like crappy stuff i could have gotten involved in from an early age in like high school you know what i mean like I could have gotten a girl pregnant or something, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, who yeah. knows? Because, I mean, I I graduated from a high school that yeah. was rated top. It, it was like, they were the f- fifth highest um, school in Texas for rates of teen pregnancy. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It, so yeah. Um, it was kind of a wild school to be at. Yeah. But, uh, so I think that, you know, maybe my parents even if they don't like practice religion Mm -hmm. neither of my parents really practice it yeah my mom doesn't go to church Mm -hmm. anymore my dad goes like with my stepmom like i don't know they go in phases you know what i mean like they they'll go like one or two times Mm -hmm. um you know in a month and then they won't go again for six months Mm -hmm. or three months and then they'll go like once or twice you know what i mean so like they still go um but you know i think it is kind of important for people to have something to hold on to whether Mm -hmm. it be you know the universe or yeah some sort of faith or some some belief you know any any religion but like too much i feel like it's just like any organized religion it's like it can bog you down bring you down man yeah well there's just there's some good like what was it some good values and learning lessons and like you know what was it kind of like i guess like like parables and stories and like you know not necessarily be taken full full on literally but like it's like to be interpreted in everyone's different life and life path right and it's like what was it yeah because what's scary is how people can take that shit like literally and it's like whoa it's like hold on there buddy i don't know everyone's different to each their own and i don't know just for me you know i just never they never synced up with me. I never really got down with it. And, and stories, stories are kind of stuck in time. Yeah. But there's there's an element of stories. I mean, you can just look at mm-hmm. like fiction novels. Yeah. There's an element in stories that like have a clear positive message mm-hmm. most of the time. You know, mm-hmm. um, that I think you can kind of is- extract from the time related restrictions in the text you know what i mean yeah so um that's sort of how i look at any religious text Mm -hmm. uh is just you know it's just like it's just lessons that Mm -hmm. 
people needed at the time. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, s some of them still apply today. Yeah. You know there's what I mean? Just like, for sure. There's some social rules whenever you live in a society with, yeah. you know, um, any amount of people that mm -hmm. e exclude one. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. <laughs> so, no, I follow um, no, I, I understand what you're putting down then. Yeah. And, no, yeah, it's just like, yeah, spirituality, man, it, it's far out stuff. And I don't know, for me, like, I think I want to say like 2018, that's when I guess, I guess going back to like, the whole thing, like, you know, discovering of spirituality and like uh, self-realization and everything, you know, it's just, it's like 2018 and everything. I started like, you know, you like searching and like, what is God, who is God and, and stuff like that. And just, you know, reading the different texts, like the, what was it, like some like Hindu books, and like the, the Torah, the Quran, the Bible, just all that stuff. And then, I don't know, it's just, it's very interesting stuff. And like, you know, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, that was some good, good information. And like, I don't know, it's just, I don't know, it's just, you know, self-realization and, you know, I don't know, just living, man. And you know, also reconnecting with my heritage and culture because I'm Peruvian and Mexican and what was it? My grandmother would always tell us like oral oral stories about like our ancestors in Peru because we're related to like one of the last emperors of Peru, I believe. I think wow. his name was like Huascar, I want to say. And then Altahualta was, uh, was the emperor that killed Huascar and then when he was on his way back to Cusco, that's when he met Pisado, I believe, hmm. the conquistador that uh, that killed him before he got to sit on the throne. It's, it's kind of like a weird story of karma. Whenever the Spanish yeah. came over. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, like, you know, just reconnecting with my Incan culture and also my dad's side. He's, he's Mexican, so Aztec as well. Hmm. And so, because in, in Incan culture, we believe that we're children of the sun, like, the uh, sun god Inti, that's my name, like Inti translates the sun. Hmm. And my, my mother gave me a very indigenous name because at the time she was heavily involved with the American Indian movement in New York, going to the UN and protests and stuff like that. Hmm. And like just a full blown activist for indigenous rights and everything. And so she gave me a very like, traditional name or Incan or indigenous name. It's just Inti Kanchari Waman, which translates to sun shining hawk. And so Back to the whole, you know, I guess like, uh, you know, I guess creation story of like through the Incas, it was like the sun god Inti, uh, you know, gave, uh, what was it, the humans, uh, this bolt of like a sun ray and told the first emperor and like, hey, you gotta go out and wherever this, wherever you stab this uh, stake of sunlight is where you you found you found the uh, Cusco, the capital of Peru. That's like where you'll, the emperor empire will build build out from. So uh, I believe yeah, like uh, yeah, children of the sun. So like we're directly like from the sun. And I guess when you die, you go back to the sun. And I don't know. It's just I don't know too much. Too much. You know. I can't. I'm not. I don't. I won't claim. I know everything. And I don't. You know. It's, I'm still learning every day. We're all learning every day. Life's a learning experience. But just reconnecting with my culture, it's kind of like, it's really deep and it's like, knowing it's powerful that, like, for yeah, you. Yeah, you know, definitely. Yeah. And like knowing my ancestors, like the blood runs through my, my veins and everything. And it's, it's nice, it's comforting, it's reassuring, kind of like, reminds you like, you know, you're not alone. Ancestors before you have done this journey before of life, you know, in this space and time that we are in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know, it's very comforting to know that, I don't know, you know, yeah, and no, I, I think yeah. that it's something that people don't think about very much. And honestly, before I met you, I didn't think about it very mm -hmm. much, you know. But I guess because you don't know, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You don't know those people. Mm -hmm. You don't know what happened in their life experiences or yeah. whatever your ancestry line. And, you know, it's kind of hard to say, like, whether or not it really affects you. But I know that science has found that... Um, people's life experiences can alter the uh, way that DNA is replicated. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of a weird thing to think yeah. about, that people's life experiences or uh, what they actually, you know, ingest or mm -hmm. digest in their body, you know, like it makes a difference into how DNA is replicated. Um, just, it's just kind of interesting. But um, 
So whenever you were talking about ancestry stuff, like mm -hmm. whenever we were hanging out in your room that day, uh, yeah. that's one of the things I was like thinking in it. And I was like, oh, you know what? I can kind of draw a connection between these two things, yeah. you know? So yeah, no, it's cool um, to think about that stuff. Um, and then like question why it is that you are the way that you are because people are sometimes very different from their parents. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're very similar, but sometimes yeah. people are very different mm -hmm. from their parents. It's kind of peculiar. You know what I mean? No, like, it is. It's fascinating. It's yeah. just like, like, how did this happen? Yeah. <laughs> like, you were around this person your whole life and you mm -hmm. didn't become what they were like. Yeah. So, um, no, that's cool. Um, I was actually going to ask you a question yeah. and maybe we could close out on this question. Um, I don't, I don't want this to go like any longer than like, an hour yeah so. for sure uh, i feel like this would be a good question to close on yeah let's um, do it have you had any issues with like separating um the artist side of you from mm -hmm. your identity like d did you ever have like a a moment where um you were sort of so consumed with art that it was mm -hmm. very like hard for you to see you know other aspects of your life or have you always been somewhat balanced in that i've definitely like had like a hiatus when i have questions like what am i doing man like you know and it it comes in waves sometimes you know like i don't know it's easy to get lost in anything really get lost in the sauce man you know, <laughs> that could be anything and i don't know and now it just feels like a good balance you know because i don't know just i'm just being me man i'm just being myself i don't live for anyone else just live for me and like you know, just, I don't know, it's just, that is a really good question. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, some, uh, I, yeah, I don't know, it's, I do sometimes, like, what was it? I guess not, not all the time, but I don't know, it's just like, I'm just me, and like, I just do art, and was I guess like the, you know the artist because sometimes I straddle between like the artist and then designer and like, I don't know like art doesn't have to work but design has to work because you're communicating a message whether that be like advertising or promotion mm. for like a show or something but like I like to do both sometimes I don't know or I, I, I don't know I'm just me and yeah. uh, when I'm doing art that's just me like I don't know uh, design that's just me and uh, yeah. but yeah definitely yeah. hiatuses come and go but it's I always get back on the saddle, man. And it's just like, no, I'm just gonna keep trucking, man. Keep making art, having fun. Cause I don't know, like sometimes it, the art and design can feel like work, but at the end of the day, it's like, no, this is what I love having fun to do. And it does feel like work sometimes, but at the end of the day, I wouldn't rather be doing anything else. I'm just here making, doing, getting cutouts, uh, handwriting, having like hand drawing illustrations and typography as well. That's what I've been really having fun with is just doing hand drawn typography. Mm. Cause like you can like download a font online anywhere, but like mm -hmm. you hand drawing like your own fonts and typefaces. Can't be replicated. Can't be replicated. Yeah. Man. yeah. But no, just having fun. Like that's all I got to say really. And just keeping it simple, man. And not getting hung up on stuff. You that's know? good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I, the reason why I asked that question, because I think at one point, um, while I was doing music, mm -hmm. uh, I got into this like weird headspace where yeah. it sort of became my, like, an identity that I clung mm -hmm. on to. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it was like kind of hard for me to, um, do or be anything else mm -hmm. and then i can't remember i can't say exactly when this happened mm -hmm. but i want to say it was like close to about three like no maybe close to like four or five years ago yeah um i had kind of a weird uh epiphany it was just mm -hmm. i can't remember what it was that I was doing or if, if I was doing anything significant, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't, that like sparked this train of thought, but then I was just, I was just thinking like, you know what, being a, a, you know, a musician and then like clinging so hard to that identity is pretty restricting. Mm -hmm. And so, 
No, you're going to get um, boxed in. Y- yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's... And then I had to, like, kind of break it down in, in my head and was like, okay, well, what... You know, what is it that I, that is making me cling to this identity for, you know, so hard? Yeah. And, um, I, th- I think I kind of, like, worked through it over years. Yeah. You know, going by. But, um... Uh, I, I want to say like maybe about two years ago, I kind of, I finally felt like the weight of that, mm-hmm. like, you know, clinging on to the identity, identity, like kind of be lifted. Mm-hmm. And, uh, after that kind of like happened, after that happened, uh, it almost felt like, okay, I mean, yeah, music is one part of my life, yeah. but I'm interested in other things and yeah. I can do other things and it doesn't have to you know, feel weird and I was sort of Mm -hmm. able to explore other untapped parts about my personality. And I feel like with people that, uh, have like a very, uh, driven and ambitious mindset that that's something that, um, can become like a trap. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, definitely just like even yourself in it's like, Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, even if you are an artist and you're like Mm -hmm. taking it very seriously, and it kind of Mm -hmm. becomes like who you are and everything you talk about, Um, because I've seen, I've met people like that, and I can recognize it within myself that that it was something that I also did at one point. And you know, some people can, some people can like tap into other parts of their personality Mm -hmm. and like be able to separate it yeah so to speak like this is just one part of my life like yeah. uh and i think after you do that you're able to kind of not be as bothered by mm-hmm. things if they don't go your way as far yeah. as as far as like in, in the like artistic realm you know mm-hmm. what i mean like i feel like people hold on to a lot of like anger and resentment for not getting the attention they think they deserve yeah. and stuff like that and mm-hmm. um I, 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 I really think that that's kind of a a personal trap that people put themselves yeah. in. Which, so that's why I kind of asked that question because mm-hmm. I've never gotten the impression from you that you ever really struggled with that. And that was kind mm-hmm. of unique. Like, you know, I don't meet many people that um, I, I can, like, many, many people that can talk as like fluidly about different things as you can so oh thank you i'm just <laughs> i'm just having fun and just living man that's all you got to say and, <laughs> you know like I, like yeah just having fun man just keep trucking along just living this life man <laughs> mm-hmm. and no yeah it's it's a good time and yeah dude i definitely like, but i do understand what you're saying when you get feel like you box yourself in it's just like it feels like you just feel that weight and you know I, I, I get, you know, like I guess it comes in hiatuses, like, just, I'm just like you, I'm just like anyone else, like, it happens, I feel like, to everyone, and, mm-hmm. you know, like, I don't, whenever, like, I don't know, like, what you were saying about, like, people not getting, with, like, credit or, like, representation or, like, uh, exposure yeah. that they think, think like, they deserve, and it's like, I, I don't really do that, do art for that, I just do it for me, because, like, just for fun, and it's mm-hmm. like, you know, it's like people. No that's the best way to do it. Yeah, it's the best way to do it. And and you know, I, I and I think that really that sort of stuff comes from the culture we live in. You know, we're told to be uh, ambitious mm-hmm. and get all of the things. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's, it's like expectations. You got to lose expectations because mm-hmm. like it's good to have some expectation, but it's not not always. Because like if you have all these expectations and shit doesn't go the way you plan it or you want it you're gonna, it's gonna bring you down and you're gonna get hung up on that and it's like no expectations man and you know no matter what like no matter what art or craft it's like there's always gonna be people that dig it and there's people that aren't gonna dig it man and that's just something like i had to accept and realize and it's like kind of like a fuck you attitude but with a grain taking it with a grain of salt you know and it's like i'm a this is me. This is what I'm bringing to the table. You get down with it, or you, you're not. And it's with every man. Hmm. It's all love with everyone. Like that's why I said it's like peace and love, man. Like I just got, I don't know, just living, man. And I want everyone to live and like you know love it, love each other. Like and yeah. I don't know. It's just I have a good time. Everyone should have a good time, man. It's like, oh man, it's just just live, man. It's just live together and like, you know, I don't know. 
I, I don't know. All, all I know is I know nothing, man. <laughs> I'm just living. <laughs> I'm just talking, rambling. But I'm here, here with you, having a good time in, in the studio, man. <laughs> well, but, yeah, this was fun. Um, this was, yeah, this was really, and you know, you, you're 23, you said? Yeah. That's, uh, say, I, I, th- I remember, you know, just kind of thinking back to, um, what I was doing around 23 mm-hmm. and 24. And it was like, that was around the time I had been in, I had gone back to school and mm-hmm. I had been in school for about two years. And I think that was around the time whenever I sort of was woken up to, mm-hmm. to, um, like how I, the, just the fact that I was looking at like things in the artistic realm in, in an unhealthy mindset, you know, and was able to sort of work through that. And, uh, so you're in a very good place, like mentally with your, with your art and your, okay, your yeah, perspective yeah. on things. So yeah, good job, yeah, man. Yeah. Just like oh, thanks, <laughs> man. one friend to another, like yeah. you're doing a good job. <laughs> so, oh, thanks. That means a lot to you. Yeah. Love you, man. Of course. <laughs> All right. That was uh hickory street podcast. Is- <laughs> <laughs> Inti Uman and uh thanks for watching. Cheers. Cool. <laughs>